What's going on everybody? If you've been following along with my Hydra setup series, welcome back. And now it's time for me to set up the air assist. So hang on tight. So to give you a better understanding of why I want this on my machine is I actually do a lot of cutting. And so making sure that you have a high airflow is super important for clean cut lines and make sure that you have less char on your pieces and you are keeping your flames and smoke to a minimum. So that's why I'm gonna put this in. And honestly, if you are planning on doing something like this, I would not even bother going with your traditional pump to hook to this. I would go to a compressor setup like my compressor that I have back here. So let's go ahead, let's look at all the pieces and get started. All right, so what comes in the box is you've actually got the control and valves that are in here. Um, you have your airline, you have connectors to the controller, and then you have the relays that actually go in with the board on the right side of the machine. This guy here is an extension cable that goes from the relays all the way around the back of the machine to the left side where all of the air hookups are. Um, that, which is great because I also have my compressor over on the left side of the machine. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start off by getting the air lines on the left side of the machine connected the way that they're supposed to be so we can integrate this and then we'll jump to the right side of the machine and get all of this hooked up. So this is the left side of the machine. You open up this door, this is where the RF tube is, and right there is the original air solenoid that we are going to disconnect the lines from and we're going to end up bypassing this. So we need to grab the um, six mil to six mil connector to make this one line. So we're using our inline connector here and we need to disconnect this hose here and this hose here so we can put this in between. So you press on the ring and pull out and then same thing, press on the ring and pull out. So we've got this, press that there and this one here and connect it on the other side. So it should look just like that. All right, so here we are now on the right side of the machine and we have our relay. So the relay is going to connect to the boards here on this right side. So I'm gonna orient my relay with this bigger black connector. So it is facing towards the back of the machine. And that just goes and it can <clears throat> magnetize down to the base of the machine. We are looking at these boards right here and these relays up here for this connection. So I'm gonna go ahead, lower you down and let you get closer because we're gonna work on connecting here and here first. All right, so now we're looking at the top part of the board here and these are some of the out connectors. So you've got out one, two, three, four, and five. And we need to connect our connectors to four for the low and five for the high. You can see that five already has a connector in there that we're actually going to need to remove. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. Just with some needle nose pliers, I gently grabbed the sides of that connector to pull it loose. So we're gonna go ahead and just push this one out of the way. So I'm gonna go with our high connector first. And when you get into your board, if you look really close in at the very back of the board, you will see that it's written on there high, or, um, which out it is. So we're going out five for high. We're gonna go and place that upwards. And then we're going to grab our low for our spot number four. And you just push them back until you hear them snap into place. All right, so now with these connectors in, you're looking for your OV cable. So OV here, and it's going to go into a ground port that's on this side. So we're going to put the clip side up and connect right to the third one down. And that's right here on the left side of the board, kind of where you can see the USB cables here. All right, next we're looking at the relays that are lined up here up top that are just above the controller. And this is where we're going to put the forks for the L51 and L52. You can actually see a cable here that is labeled L5. We're going to put L52 up here in line on top of L51, so this cord that already, or cable that already exists, 
and then straight down from there we'll go our L5-1. So L5-2 is going to join this one up here that is already labeled L5. And we'll tighten these ones down. There you can see L5-2 on top of that L5 cable, and here is our L5-1. We're going to go straight down and underneath right here. So this is the third terminal over. and then we'll tighten that back up. All right, so now the last cable that we need to connect is this RD shot. So this one right here, it's a green and yellow cable. It is gonna to go to the second block from the left. And then if you actually look, so on mine and in other models and even in the instructions, it did not have this case. But it is one, two, three, four from the left. And it actually has shot is what it's called right there on that block. So we're gonna pull this block out so that way we can loosen the screws and add that cable. And so again, we're looking at one, two, three, four from the left. So down here, one, two, three, four from the left. We're gonna loosen that up. And you will need some of the smaller screwdrivers so that way you can make that happen. Once that's tight, so we've got that there. Tighten that up. We can go ahead and push that connector back in. So you'll also see too, you can reference it as being just a connector in between the white wire that's already there. So this cable here is for pump. We are not gonna use that. So we're gonna go ahead and then just move that out of the way. We're going to use this cable here and grab our cables on this side. So this bundle of cables, we're gonna go ahead and connect the female side here to this male and then run the rest of this cable along the back of the machine over here and around the back so we can get all the way to the other side. Something that I really like about how the Hydra is set up is it has these rear doors that you can open up so you can get to this back channel where you have some cables going and even power supplies. So here is my cable from the air assist connections and the relay on the right side of the machine going all the way over to the right side or the left side. And so now I'm ready to go to the left side of the machine and actually pull it through and get things connected. So let's jump over there and make it happen. All right, so now here on the left hand side of the machine, we've got our cable pulled through. So in the manual, it talks about feeding the line up and running it out of this panel here, just opening up these screws and letting it come down. Uh, that will be necessary if you still have all of your sensors turned on. On my machine, I actually turn them off because I'm recording content. And so the option that I'm going to do is actually I'm going to run it out and have it just kind of poke out the very back of the machine. 
So it'll sit underneath this door and just kind of hang out. And I'm gonna actually have my air assist live right here so I can make adjustments and I can see it, but it's not in my way. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, Ash and Ember, David, he actually right now currently has it set up so that it's coming out of this door. He just has it partially opened, but same thing, he has sensors turned off. So these sensors are gonna wreak havoc and they're gonna whine at you if you don't have those disengaged in light burn. So if you wanna be safe, leave them on. I recommend doing what they're saying here. Um, you probably could even go ahead and cut like kind of a U-shaped hole here so that way you can feed this wire through and it be safe and not uh, cause any problems because your line is actually still gonna have to connect back here for your air assist. So here you can see I fed my cable up through this grommet here and I've got the cable up and I can kind of just set it right here on this tray and then close my door. So it will just live right there and I can feed it up to the top of the machine. And we'll go ahead and get that connected to the connector that goes into the air assist module. All right, so here is the actual air assist module. I've got this cable connected to the one that connects to it. And then we're gonna go ahead and put that guy here. And tighten up these little thumb screws. Okay, now it's in there. And now we can go ahead and connect our air lines. So we're gonna go ahead and get this set up so we can put the regulator in between our compressor and this module. So it came with two of these connectors. And the nice thing is it actually has little um, O-rings on the back here. So you shouldn't have to Teflon tape them. So we'll go ahead, install those. And I will get a wrench and we will tighten those down. But you will see that there is an in and out. So it shows a flow of air. So your air should come in here and then out here to the module. So my compressor on this side and my laser on this side. And you'll see that by this little triangle here pointing to the flow of air. All right, so now I've got my compressor line going in and then this line going out to the air assist module. And I'm actually just gonna cut off a length because I will now need an out to go from here to the back of the machine. All right, so now with our in from our regulator, out from our module and plugged into the back of the machine where the air intake is for the stock pump. So because that line now runs and it is spliced together, bypassing this solenoid that's here and just using the air assist. So we're gonna go ahead and power on the machine and just make sure that this powers up and then we will test everything and make sure it works the way it's supposed to. So you can see we've got power to the unit and I have gone and set up my compressor. So the compressor you can see here, I've got about, oh, 60 PSI set in there. And then I also set about 50 PSI here on our secondary regulator. So we're gonna go ahead and do some testing. So now if we press, this is our high flow, we hit test. We've got about almost 20 PSI. So that's where I want it. So we can go ahead and adjust it. So press, and then I'm going to dial this in, turning it to the positive side, about 20 PSI, and then test here, and that's about one. So it's just a bleed of air. So I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit more. We'll go to two and we'll test things out, see how we like that. Um, but that's how I like the machine set up right now for those two options. And the way that this gets told what to do in Lightburn is when you turn the air assist toggle to on in your layer settings, it will request high flow. When it is turned off, it will only request low flow. So over in Lightburn, you are able to go to your layer setting and this option right here is what will decide what is going to be turned on for high flow or low flow. Turning it off gives you low flow and turning it on gives you high flow. So my idea is if you're doing an engraving, 
I usually will pick a low flow, so turning the air off. If you are doing a cut, I will turn the air on. All right, so there you go. Now I've got my air assist on my machine where I want it, and I'm ready to get back to work. So I hope that this was helpful and helped guide you through the process of getting this set up. Honestly, it's pretty straightforward as long as you know what ports and things that you're looking for. So follow the manual along pretty close and it is correct. The only thing it didn't explain was that you needed to have the L wires looped on top of each other with the existing one that's in there. So please like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.